In this video, I'll be showing you how to replace all the capacitors on your Sega Game Gear. I'm Enoch Du, and this is Retro Revive. Sega Game Gears were produced in a time when there were a lot of bad capacitors on the market. Now they can start bulging and leaking and causing all kinds of problems in your system. Your best bet is to buy a kit off eBay and replace them yourself. I'll be walking you through in painstaking detail how to do this. This project is not for the faint of heart. The disassembly of the Sega Game Gear is pretty straightforward. First you'll need to remove the battery covers and any batteries inside. Remove the six screws on the back of the Game Gear and the large security screw. Carefully pull the two halves apart, swinging the back up as to not yank on the cords attached between them. Unplug the sound and power boards. From here on out, all the screws inside are going to be Phillips. Unscrew the eight screws in the motherboard and pull it free. Unscrew the four screws in the metal shield and remove it to gain access to the power and sound boards. Unscrew the four screws in the power and sound boards and remove them. The black piece attached to the power board has some adhesive holding it in place. Just gently peel it out. Before you get into replacing capacitors, you're going to need to know where they go and how to position them. Each capacitor has two specs on it, microfarads and voltage. While the microfarads need to match up with the capacitors being replaced exactly, the voltage needs to be equal or greater than the voltage of the one it's replacing. The polarity of the capacitors can be determined by the stripe or shorter lead on the negative side. The small ceramic capacitors don't have a negative or positive side. Fortunately, Sega marked the polarity on the capacitors and the contacts very well. At this point, I take the opportunity to lay out the capacitors around the board generally relative to the ones they'll be replacing. I do this so that I know I have everything I need and I don't have to search for capacitors when I'm getting into it. I recommend replacing just a few at a time so you don't lose track of which ones go where. Next, I'm going to break down how to desolder the capacitors by board. As they're mounted differently on each one, I'll go from easiest to hardest. First is the motherboard. Apply the soldering iron to the first contact to melt the solder. Using a pair of tweezers, twist the capacitor to break the glue loose and lift the first side away. Still holding the capacitor, melt the second contact and pull it away. Now for the power board. Flip over the board and either melt the solder with the soldering iron and suck the solder away with the solder sucker or wick the solder away by pressing a copper solder wick between the iron and the solder. Now pull out the old capacitor. It may need some extra coaxing from the iron. Now for the soundboard. Apply the iron to the first contact to melt the solder. Using an edge tool, separate the small tab of the capacitor from the contact pads very carefully. Make sure they separate cleanly as there's a real possibility of accidentally lifting the trace. Hold the capacitor with tweezers, melt the second contact, and pull it away. Now as we begin to solder the new capacitors in place, remember to keep polarity in mind. When soldering on new ones, also make sure that none overlap the copper pads on the motherboard. Those are contact points between the board and the back casing for some rigidity behind the buttons. The system won't close up properly if anything's in the way. Now for the motherboard. Bend down the lead so the capacitor can lay flat. Snip off excess wire from the leads, but not too much. Apply heat to the contact pad and first lead with the iron. And add solder, you'll need at least a little bit. And then solder on the other lead. For the power board, push the new capacitor's leads through the old one's holes until it's against the board. Solder it from underneath and then snip or twist off the excess lead. For the soundboard, while you can do some like you did for the motherboard, 
Um, you'll need to do it a little bit differently for ones that are under the shield. First, bend out the leads flat in opposite directions. Snip off the excess lead, center it where the old one was, and then solder it into place. The hard part's over. Now all that's left to do is reassemble it. And essentially it's just backwards from how you assembled it. Screw the four screws back into the power and sound boards. Screw the four screws back into the metal shield. Screw the eight screws from the motherboard back into place. The big ones are for either side of the cartridge slot. Plug the sound and power boards back in. Close it up and screw in the six Phillips screws and security bit back in the back. So there you have it. That's how I go about replacing all the capacitors and Sega Game Gears. I know this is a resource that I wish I would have had when I first was figuring it out rather than um, gallivanting around the internet. Um, let me know if this was helpful for you in the comments below or if you have any suggestions for future videos. I'd like to become a little more um, consistent with my uploads and my blog posts and in my videos. And if you like what you see, you can subscribe to find more. As always with this tutorial, I broke it down step by step in my blog post if you'd rather read along than watch this video. And I'll see you in the next one.